I'm Phil Jarvis and I run the farming operations at the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust Allerton Project. So we're going to talk about arable farming and cultivation and rotations. We're going to talk about soil health, reducing inputs. We're going to look at how cover crops, stock and stockless systems with grass can work. And we're going to look at agroforestry and habitat management and how that habitat management can benefit your crop production and the environment. So just looking at other approaches to agroecology, uh, and this is about introduction of grass into mainly arable rotation. So these fields behind me with the sheep grazing in, a bit of a black grass problem uh, a couple of years ago. So we're putting grass down for two or three years, possibly even four, making use of uh, animals grazing it to try and control black grass by reducing the number year on year and then hopefully back into the rotation, less inputs, more nitrogen coming from the grassland as well. So less reliance on uh, in or, uh, or inorganic inputs and plant protection products. So um, good for the soil, good for fertility uh, and good for my pocket as well. Here in a livestock area, these are my neighbor's sheep. Uh, so we come to an arrangement there about who pays what, who pays the rent. Uh, to make sure that that's still a viable uh, income stream for me as well. So land swapping, renting in an area with your neighbour who may well have the expertise is another option. Just going to look now about introducing grassland into an area perhaps where fencing, buildings, uh, labour and um, livestock might not be available and what I call a stockless system. We're doing some work here in the field behind me uh, with two sorts. Is one is a uh, clover and rye grass, and the other one is a herbal lay. And just looking at how this fits into a rotation. How does it fit in with current agri environment? How could it fit into agri environment in the future? But more importantly, can it clean up the black grass on your farm? Could it be used for anaerobic digestion? And could it be used for building fertility into the rest of your rotation? So there are more ways of bringing these approaches in, which perhaps reduce our inputs in the future and have a much more sustainable farming system. So we're here at our agroforestry field, which is combining trees with grassland. So benefits for shade for animals, benefits for cleaner water, better soil structure, and actually this is a carbon sink as well. It's going to have trees growing it in the future. There are several approaches to agroforestry. For example, this area behind me is in a, a shrub option under agri-environment. So there's things like privet and hazel and uh, things that we use for our hedge laying around the farm when we maintain our hedges, that's growing in there. So that's going to be a resource for my farm in later years. It was a poor piece of ground. It, it, it used to flood a lot. So we've been able to, been able to enhance it in, uh, for lots of other things on the farm. And we receive a payment for it as well in our agri-environment scheme. If we're looking at uh, an agroecological approach and, and really some economics as well, taking out land out of production in poor yielding areas or straightening fields up can be a benefit to your business if you're there in an agri environment scheme, but also they can provide things for pollinators, farmland birds, and some things that will enhance your crop in the middle. Your crop in the meantime is being grown in the middle of the field in the most fertile part of the farm, and yet you're doing something for the environment in the other. So this is a, this is a year one uh, wild bird crop which we'll probably replace but in the background is another one growing that will produce seed in year two. So it all ends up with framing your farm, producing wildlife corridors but still keeping productive farming in the middle of the field and making the benefit of economies of scale that way.